Hey everyone, a uh, quick disclaimer, I'll be speaking quite generally about universities in this video, so if your experience differs from what I describe, great. Let me know in the comments. In the end, I can only speak for myself, of course. But frankly, universities are actually pretty conservative places to be. There might be exceptions, but the dominant way of thinking in most social science faculties supports capitalism, liberal democracy, and the rest of the status quo. Far from being a hotbed of radical Marxism or whatever people think, the university tends to look unfavorably on radical views and weeds out professors who try to spread them around. Left-wing activity on campus is likely to be in spite of what professors teach, not because of it. I know it seems weird if you're used to hearing conservatives say academia is dominated by the left, but most conservatives don't know that the left is really different from liberals and other moderates, and even liberals are not the most influential people on most campuses. The heads of departments and others who control the hiring and firing of professors tend to be quite conservative. They benefit as much as anyone from uh, the system the way it is. They get six-figure salaries, tenure, grants, book sales, media attention, consulting jobs for government and corporation alike, and whatever other benefits you get for being considered one of the top people in your field. They don't usually hire leftists because leftists rock the boat. Yeah, the occasional Marxist slips through, but they tend to be, to coin an oxymoron, conservative Marxists, writing dense theoretical and historical books, more concerned with keeping their jobs than revolution. Or, as I read somewhere recently, when push comes to shove, the academic left is more academic than left. And anarchists and post-leftists? In academia? Hardly. They're way too radical, too dangerous to keep around. And even those liberal or slightly left-leaning professors who dare to criticize Israel, there are dozens of organizations, in, at least in the United States, like Campus Watch and the Israel on Campus Coalition that will track you and report you and try to get you fired. The fact is, Professors and their bosses are subject to propaganda all their lives, just like you and I. So their beliefs and their priorities don't usually differ that much from the general population. Institutions come with limits. If you want to stir things up, academia probably isn't for you. Your contract won't get renewed. You won't advance in the university hierarchy, your proposals won't get accepted, you won't get grants, you won't get tenure. So it doesn't even matter much what your personal beliefs are. You play the game, or you're not invited back next time. Besides, students aren't blank slates. You could have all the facts at your disposal, but that doesn't necessarily mean you're going to change anyone's minds. I came out of my undergrad able to criticize any ideology and even win arguments, but still unaware of any ideology the university, or for that matter the wider propaganda, might have taught me. I was really good at attacking people's beliefs, but I didn't examine my own. What kind of education is that? The beliefs I picked up in poli -sci were actually pretty mainstream. The same as everyone else's, but with the glitter of a degree to give them credibility. I know what I'm talking about. I studied this stuff for four years. But was it really studying if it led me to the same ideas as everyone else? Let me give you a quick rundown in four points of the beliefs I left university with 15 years ago. First... Capitalism is the only viable economic system. Socialism and communism mean totalitarian rule, so there's no reason to consider them. Second, so-called liberal democracy means freedom and is 
infinitely malleable so that if the people really want something in a democracy, it'll happen. Elections help preserve democracy. Three, things keep getting better and people are getting freer and more prosperous and less prejudiced. I doubt it. And four, social institutions like governments, corporations, NGOs might be misguided right now, but they can be reformed and restaffed and live up to their stated ideals. I'm sorry if any of those propositions sound uncontroversial to you, but if they do, please hit subscribe fast because you need this channel. What I was taught to believe was exactly what the propaganda would want me to believe. We still took things at face value, assuming democracy was really democracy, rights were rights, etc. And assuming we weren't ethnocentric or otherwise indoctrinated, but objective observers. It wasn't until years after my degree I learned to question it. I never stopped studying the subjects that I was interested, like politics and economics. But most of what I was reading right after graduation just kind of added to the body of knowledge I was supposedly accruing. It wasn't until I started using social media to learn that I was exposed to ideas you don't hear about at university, like anarchism. I finally saw people analyze the whole system. So I finally got the opportunity to see the roots of social problems. I stopped with the whole free-floating analysis for the sake of analysis and changed the priorities of my research. I found myself with more and more questions about social institutions, like the police, money, racism, patriarchy, everything in the end. And the more I learned, the more I saw them as connected to class society, hierarchical social relations based on violence. I knew I had a lot of of history to learn, because if you really want to understand something, you need to know its history. And the history of these things is usually very different from what's assumed about them and what we've been told all our lives. If you're new here, I talk about all, all these subjects on my channel in other videos, so check them out. Anyway, now I was beginning to put things together, to synthesize the things I was learning. So I was learning theory that actually explained the world better than the theories I had studied in class, and history I could use to test the theory. I could think more about how institutions create incentives and limits, and how they reproduce themselves. I think I hadn't realized that was the point of theory. You know, I guess I just always assume the point of theory was to complicate things. The most important thing is to compare what you read to real life as candidly as you can. In fact, as I've explained in my video on theory, no number of books is a substitute for observing and understanding the world, especially your own situation, outside of ideological filters. When did we ever do that in poli -sci? The problem is, we usually only know there's anything to question when someone tells us something's wrong or, or could be different. You know, like when you learn to do something one way, and someone watches you doing it and goes, stand aside, there's a much better way to do that. And for the rest of your life, you now know the better way of doing it. The same is true of learning to question things. For example, I can identify the time uh, when I began to question borders and nationalism. We were having a conversation and my friend said he saw no justification for drawing a line on a map around a huge amount of territory and saying, I get to decide who comes in and out of this line. I had this fixed idea and my friend came along and shattered it with one sentence. Since then, I've learned lots more on this topic 
and my brain has never shrunk back to its original size. So I learned to question that aspect of the dominant ideology, no thanks to my classes. And there was so much more to unlearn. Some of my first videos on this channel were about ideology, and I made one you might have seen on what liberal, conservative, and other points on the so-called political compass, uh, what those things mean and how they think. But I also tried to make clear the political compass is theoretical. So it's useful for simplifying and teaching, but it doesn't necessarily represent an individual. We're all different, after all. And some people don't fall on a political spectrum. Or if they do, they might be in different points for different reasons. There's a type of ideology you could broadly call academia. I can't describe it entirely, um, but a big part of it is to be the bastion of truth and knowledge, arrived at by reason and superior to everyone else's truth and knowledge. Inside academia, there are all these different schools, and they're usually informed by an ideology too. I don't know anything about like engineering and the hard sciences, so I'm not going to talk about them. Um, but for sure, if you take a wide enough view of things, you can identify ideology in the so-called social sciences. Science is an ideology. That doesn't mean that it's wrong. But it also doesn't mean that we should assume it's right because it uses the language of science. Calling them social sciences doesn't make them value-free or objective. Where did the term come from? What's the history of social sciences and the history of each discipline? Did it start in the service of empire? Does it still serve empire today? Are they asking the right questions? How can we question their research methods? I tend to get pretty suspicious when I see an attempt at a scientific looking social science full of charts and formulas that no one will ever use, trying to use complex math to predict political events. What's the point? There aren't any social problems you could put that same time and effort into? The word ideology has a lot of connotations, I know, but I see it as neutral. It's not the same as dogma. It could mean anything from a religion practiced by 20 people to a global system like capitalism. From what I've seen, I think academia inherits the ideology of the ruling class and strengthens it by justifying it to millions of people. The folks at the top get paid well for it. And that matters in the social sciences because the university set the ideological tone for discourse outside the university. They're kind of the high priests of the capitalist system. You know, they present themselves as the guardians of truth, the experts that designate experts. They present us with the arguments in favor of the status quo. They make sure we focus on a limited range of theories and assume anything outside that range is not to be taken seriously. So we can question and analyze, but only within the limits set by someone else. Then they send us out into the world to spread the word. In as much as my experience is typical, universities create people who know enough to argue convincingly in favor of the status quo, but not enough to see it for what it really is. We can see the effects of their work on the news and in our conversations on current events. They taught us to focus on the wrong thing. If we're talking about politics, why is it we immediately think of parties and politicians of vote and voting? Why don't we think of, say, the effects of policy on normal people? Or how most policies are designed and by whom, and how they benefit? In other words, what goes on behind closed doors? If we talk about the economy, why do we talk about GDP or the day-to-day -day fluctuations of the stock market? which have such indirect effects on most people's lives, they're effectively irrelevant, rather than explaining where inequality comes from, 
or how people actually get rich or poor. When we talk about racism, why do we still talk about it like it's a purely individual phenomenon and the result of ignorance, rather than a sy systemic problem adopted by people acting rationally? Although that conversation might be changing. Again, no thanks to the Academy. Why do we talk about mental illness as an individual phenomenon, rather than as a result of the relentless pressure of the capitalist system that it puts on us? When we talk about the law, why do we talk about individual laws and never question the legitimacy of a legal system imposing its dictates on us under threat of punishment? Why do we continue to talk about how institu institutions should work, how they're supposed to work, in spite of no evidence they could actually work that way? I would say it was a failure of education, but I'm not convinced it's a failure. Also, why do we separate politics from other disciplines? In my classes, we learned a bit of history and political economy, some philosophy, obviously, and a little statistics, which was really useful because most people seem incapable of questioning whatever numbers they see, but then that's probably because it confirms their biases. But we didn't learn psychology, sociology, anthropology, all of which would have informed our understanding of politics and helped us question everything. We talked about the state as if it were politically neutral, when it clearly is not. As I've explained in like half my videos, the latest research on the origins of states like, say, from James C. Scott's work, would throw half or even 100% of what we read about the state out the window. Are they teaching the latest research? Or are they still teaching the just-so stories of political science like Hobbes, Locke, and Rousseau? What's the core of politics or political science? What exactly are we supposed to study? What are we supposed to know by the end of our studies? Why try to make it scientific? And why prioritize those things that can be measured scientifically? Why do we read mostly dead white men? How are we supposed to question what we read? Especially if we're comparing one dead white guy to another one. How do we question what the professors say? And when are we going to talk about the CIA and the Pentagon's influence on campus? Oh, that's not in the curriculum? What do you know? We should have been... We should have practiced identifying and analyzing all the assumptions made in the field and all of its biases. And we should have borne them in mind every day. When I say the department or, or the field has an ideology, it's not that they only teach one way of thinking, but just that there's a dominant way of thinking with its own built-in assumptions. It's not that you aren't allowed to think any other way, but you better be damn good at proving it on paper. When I think about how much those classes made me question, I'm surprised how little I actually learned to question. There's a lot I wish I'd learned. I learned a bit of several different philosophies, but we never took a look at the systems. We rarely discussed or questioned propaganda, so our classes had standard poli-sci curriculum discussing the standard things politics is considered to be. We should have been questioning those assumptions right from day one. We didn't learn psychology, like how having power affects people, or how being a subject of oppression affects someone. We rarely discussed racism or settler colonialism, even though we were living on stolen land. The closest they ever came to that was acknowledging that it's stolen land uh, on websites and before symposiums, when to me that feels like avoiding talking about it. We never talked about the heteropatriarchy and how we ourselves might have reinforced it without realizing, which I'm quite sure that I did back then. 
we didn't discuss the violent history of capitalism or the state or the class society that they left us with. We just assume it's all legitimate. We never questioned the existence of any social institution, so we ended up strengthening our belief in them. And it might have been a good idea at some point to envision a better world, rather than accepting the one we have as inevitable. In the end, what I learned in poli sci was new vocabulary, how to write an essay, and what some old white guys said about political topics. Was it worth the money? I still don't know. But in my next video, I'm going to give you some ideas of how to give yourself a better education than a poli-sci degree for free. So that's my critique of political science and the rest of the social sciences. They're too conservative to teach us what matters, which is to scrutinize and dissect all social institutions, challenge all our beliefs and assumptions, and leave them in pieces. Because only once you've unlearned can your education really begin. Thanks.